All right, you guys, so we're gonna do something fun today. We're gonna do assumptions about me. I have been, I've been filming now. <laughs> I've been filming like back-to-back -back videos because it's Sunday and I get a break right now because the kids are napping and Joe's been watching them and stuff. So I had like a bunch of work to catch up on after being sick for the last few days. So I've been back-to-back -back videos. So if I'm like, if I sound tired and winded, it's because I haven't stopped talking. But we're gonna do an assumptions about me video. So I asked you guys on Instagram, to make some assumptions about me and like you guys did not did not hold back so i'm gonna go through um some of these and just kind of chat i don't know just do some kind of video that you guys can kind of listen to in the background and hopefully you can um just get to know me a little bit better i mean we hang out all the time so maybe this helps you get to know me a little bit if you like these kind of videos or if you like q a's make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and if you have any other like assumptions or questions that you want asked just drop them down below in the comments because i'm always asking over on instagram but sometimes it's nice like to have some from youtube because i know that not everybody follows me on instagram so anyway let's get to it so the first one is josh hates that you vlog all day so first of all i don't know who josh is i obviously this person means joe but there's no Josh in my life, I can promise you that. But the assumption that Joe hates that I vlog all day, I don't think he hates it. Um, it's definitely annoying to him, I'm sure, if like I spend the entire day vlogging, which is one of the reasons why like I like to vlog the most. Like I do a lot of my day in the life vlogs, like from the morning till like about the time that he comes home because I know that he doesn't want like the camera in his face all day long. So I try to do that. But one thing I'll tell you though, is like when I do a weekend vlog, it normally stresses him out a lot. Like if we're going on an outing or something and I'm like, hey, by the way, I'm gonna vlog it. He gets really stressed out because he's like, oh, you're gonna want it to be perfect. And, and what if it's not perfect? And then you're gonna get stressed out. And I'm like, Joseph, like I'm not gonna get stressed out. I'm just capturing footage. So I don't know what the heck is going on in his brain and his virgo brain but there's something about that that stresses him out but it's not supposed to be a stressful thing but it's just supposed to be like a let's hang out and also like get it on film and you know share it with everyone so that's what i would say about that i think at this point he's come to accept that this is just part of our life right now um and he doesn't like ever tell me like hey you cannot vlog or like put the camera down you can't film today like he never does that he knows that this is my job and i think that he embraces that so the next one is that you don't do any chores um that is very false that is a very false assumption because as much as again josh or joseph or whatever you want to call him will sometimes say about me not rinsing the avocado knife and all of that um i still do a lot of chores throughout the day he helps a ton there are a lot of chores that joe does like he'll empty the dishwasher for me um he sets it to wash like at night you know he has his evening routine where he takes out the trash and turns on the robo vacuum and all of that but like the kids laundry i do all of their laundry i fold all of their laundry like everything having to do with the kids i do that um in terms of their clothes and putting away their rooms for the most part like i think i do a lot of that and just like the everyday tidying i do all of the grocery ordering i gro i order all the groceries joe never like goes to the grocery store and decides what we're gonna eat um i do all of that i make room in the refrigerator i organize the pantry like i think i do a lot of chores we do have a cleaning team that comes to clean every two weeks and freaking i love those people they're like my favorite people in the whole world because at the very least they're cleaning the floors and cleaning the bathroom so i don't have to worry about it but yes i do a lot of chores and i would say that i do a lot of chores given the fact that i'm still taking care of two kids managing my business making my videos all of that i think i still do a lot so kiss my butt so the next assumption is that buying my kids toys and clothes is a hobby um that is a very good assumption and a correct one because it is like i love it i love buying the kids clothes buying them toys it's for me at this point like since i do most of it online like it's kind of like i always look for good deals and i'm always looking for um like when i can get good prices on stuff so it's almost like kind of like thrifting like the the factor of thrifting like i used to love going to a thrift store and getting stuff like for pennies like i used to love that but since i don't do a lot of in-store shopping other than like target um i do a lot of like my deal finding and stuff like on amazon and just mostly on amazon like when i go and i look every day like i'll go to toys and then i'll look to see like what's a good percentage off and what would the kids like and sometimes when i see a good enough deal i'll buy it and that for me is a hobby i don't know there's like a thrill of finding good deals on stuff 
Um, and then of course, like I like buying the kids clothes and you know, I, I don't feel bad about it at all. That is definitely a hobby of mine, especially when I can't sleep and I have freaking anxiety like at one in the morning. I'm like, all right, let's 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 go on oldnavy.com. Let's go on h&m.com. Let's buy some things. So this assumption is that I'm extroverted and Joe is introverted despite the fact that I have anxiety leaving the house. So I would say Joe for sure is an introvert. So that is very much a good assumption. You take him out to a party, you take him out to any kind of gathering, he is very introverted. So I think I am definitely much more extroverted than him. Um, at this point in my life, I am less extroverted just because I'm so freaking tired and I just wanna like, I, I don't love like the small talk and like meeting new people is hard because it takes energy <laughs> like i don't know i there's a part of me that is obviously extroverted if i'm over here like making videos and chatting with you guys and putting my life out there um but i would say though like in the last five five-ish years i've definitely kind of gone into my shell a little bit more just because like it takes a lot of effort to be extroverted and i'm just tired so the next assumption is that i'm close with my mom um, and that I call her a hundred times a day to tell her nonsense. That is absolutely true. I FaceTime my mom like at least five times a day. And sometimes it's just like, hey Mimi, what you doing? And she's like, nothing, I'm in my house. Like you already asked me that like five minutes ago. And you know, that's just how I get through my day. But I love it. Like it keeps me feeling close to her and close to my family since we're so far away. If you happen to be new here, we live in Virginia and my parents live in Miami. So it's been hard to be like far away from them. But the fact that I can at least FaceTime and annoy her <laughs> over the phone, it definitely helps me to feel closer to her. So the next assumption is that I am very romantic. Um, I don't, I don't even know. At this point, I don't even know. Like, I, I'm not super romantic. Like, Joe and I together are not very romantic people. Like, last night we were having a discussion because I wanted to get to, like, his side of the bed. Like, I wanted to cuddle. I wanted him to spoon me and he, he refused to. Like, he just didn't want me on his side of the bed. Like, that part to me is annoying because, like, I am, like, you know, I need a little bit of physical touch. Like, I, I want to be, like, hugged and, like, you know, cuddled. I want to be little spoon sometimes. Like, I like that. But I wouldn't consider that like being romantic. Like romantic, like I don't think we're very romantic anymore. Like I'm 31 years old. Um, just get me good food, buy me good food, let's watch a show, and that's okay. Every once in a while, yes, like wine and dine me, take me somewhere fancy, let me get dressed up. But like a lot of stuff that people consider to be like romantic, like when I see it, it's kind of like like i don't know like i just want to vomit in my mouth a little bit it's like too cheesy too corny and i'm just like not about it so i, I don't think i'm very romantic <laughs> so this next one is i assume you have a lot of cavities which would be a good assumption based on the amount of candy that i eat but i actually don't i, ha I can't tell you the last time that i had a cavity i've had one root canal in my life and that was like the worst experience of my life but um no the last time i went to the dentist i had no cavities so yeah so this person assumes that i secretly love four season weather and that i just wish my family would just move to virginia that is not false so i think that's actually true like i actually like the virginia weather i like the virginia weather much more than miami weather i like the fact that we get the seasons um towards the end of winter i'm over it like come like february last year i was over the cold weather like not being able to step outside without you know having to wear a bunch of layers like that was annoying to me but i love that we got to see snow i love the fall season um and yes if my family moved from miami to virginia i could be in virginia i could probably be pretty happy um in virginia i i don't mind it here so that's not that's not false so this assumption is that i'm always very calm that is that is not true um i am cuban and i am not calm um in the slightest um, there are moments that I can be very calm like there are some times where the kids are losing their SHIT and like I see Joe losing it and I'm like okay well everybody's losing it so I have to be calm and like I'll be calm you guys know like I'm the one that I don't mind messes like I can deal with the messy situation and then clean it up like I can be calm in that sense but there are plenty of times you guys where I um I just I lose it and whether that be because of the kids or because of joe or whatever situation i have a very short temper um 
and sometimes I, I can't be chill in the slightest. So I guess that's like the Latin in me and you will know when I'm mad. That's one thing about me. Like I let everybody know how I'm feeling at all times. Like I have a very hard time hiding it. Like you can tell it by my face. Um, Joe never has to question how I'm feeling. Am I happy? Am I sad? Like when I'm mad, you will know that I'm mad. You won't, you won't have to guess that. All right, this assumption is that I like being home with the kids all day and that I don't care about getting out of the house. I love being home. Um, I'm very much a homebody. I like my house all day long. There are some days where I get a little bit of like that need to like get out, see something different. Um, and that just changes depending on the day. Like some days I could be totally in my pajamas the entire day, watching TV, watching the kids, doing my work. And I am happy as a clam. Like I love it. But then there'll be other days, especially weekends, I get very like antsy and I'm like, I gotta go do something. We gotta go somewhere. I, like I've had enough of it all week and I need to get out. So I guess that kind of depends. So this assumption is that I'm conscious about how I look bare faced. And I will tell you that that is a false assumption because there are plenty of times that I show you guys my naked face here on my channel and there are thousands of people that look at it and I don't care. Like I've gotten to a point where I don't care. This is the face that I have. Some days it looks better than others. Um, and I don't mind going bare faced um, on Instagram. There are plenty of times where I'm not wearing makeup. I don't use filters on Instagram. I'm very like, that's um, something that I'm very passionate about, not using filters on Instagram. So no, I'm not conscious about that. And I think more people need to just embrace what their face looks like without a bunch of makeup on it. Now, that's not to say that I don't like makeup because like right now I'm wearing makeup and I like putting on makeup, but um, I will tell you there was a time in my life, like I've come very far. There was a time in my life, like especially high school, where I would not leave my house unless my face was fully done up. And by fully done up, I mean like I had to wear eyeliner. Like I, I went through a phase where I could not not have eyeliner on. I can't tell you the last time I wore eyeliner now. Um, and then I had like bangs, I had like side bangs. They always had to be done and I always had to have a full face of makeup on. So the fact that I can go on my channel and show you what I look like in the morning without any makeup on, that's a big deal. So. No. So this assumption is that I'm very fun to hang around with. Um, I'm probably very boring <laughs> to hang around with, to be honest. But I think that, cause like we don't really go anywhere. Like, I don't know where you're hanging out with me. You're gonna hang out with me in my living room with my kids. Like, I would say though, like I hope that if anybody, uh, any of us ever hang out, like I would think that I do my best to like make people at ease, like, you know, like, I meet someone and I can, I feel like I'm their friend that I've been their friend for years. You know what I mean? Like I can break the ice pretty quickly and I just never want other people to feel uncomfortable. So I think that that's probably what might come off. Like, I don't know so much fun. Cause like, I don't, I don't know what fun is like anymore, but hopefully you would get the vibe that like, I want to be your friend. You can be my friend. We're cool. Like let's, let's be chill. Um, I don't even know if that's the answer to the question. So this assumption and a lot of the assumptions here I got um, like you want one more baby, you're upset with Joe because he doesn't want any more kids. First of all, I'm not upset with Joe. Joe has very valid feelings. He makes very good points as to why he doesn't want any more kids right now. So he's allowed to have that opinion. And if you missed that whole video that I did about where we're at with baby number three, um, I'll link it here because I don't have time to go through every one of our feelings and thoughts about it. But I'm not mad at him. I don't hold that against him. There are some days that I'm like, he's right. Like we shouldn't have any more kids. And then there's other days when I'm like, oh, but maybe one more. So like that, oh, but maybe one more is still there. But like, I, I'm not mad at him. But this assumption is that I am pretty conservative and that is a, a correct assumption. I think I've made it known at this point that I am a Christian conservative woman. I have very conservative um, political beliefs. I have very conservative, just faith-based beliefs. Um, and that's just how I choose to live my life. And that's how I hope to raise my kids. All right, so this assumption says that I was a freakier one in the relationship before kids. Um, I'm gonna say yes, that that is probably true. Um, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that. But then this next assumption was you had a rebellious phase in high school slash college. So the answer to this is yes. Um, so I went to Catholic school in high school and 
I would say that I was pretty like I was pretty chill like I don't think I really gave my parents a hard time until maybe either like senior year or like my first year in college I had like a couple years that I was a little bit more rebellious more so just because like I wanted to go to the parties I wanted to see the boys like I wanted to be with boys that my mom didn't want me to be around like that kind of stuff I don't think I was ever in a situation where like you know I could have like ended up having to be like bailed out of jail or anything like that I was always very scared of doing anything that would get like the cops called or anything like that but I definitely had a little bit of a phase there and then I feel like when I met Joe then one of the things that I loved about Joe was that I knew my parents would love him because he was very straight laced and once I met him like everything that we did was together so there wasn't any like lying or like sneaking around or anything so that was like the end of my rebellious phase so this assumption is kind of random but it says that you reply to comments very selectively so about comments um so I guess that would be like true and false. Like here's what I have to say about comments. So number one, I don't respond to any negative comments. Like for like it takes a lot for me to respond to any negative comments. Like I just don't have time for that. I think a lot of like the drama that happens on YouTube is like such petty high school crap. Like it's just like really sad almost that people want to have this kind of drama like when they're grown women and like whatever so i don't answer to that kind of stuff i will apologize here right here and now that i haven't been as good about responding to comments on my youtube channel because i mean not that there's excuses but like i've just i've been extremely busy and sometimes i have to choose like Am I going to respond to comments or am i going to make other videos am i going to spend time with the kids and sometimes that kind of takes a back burner. I will tell you, I read every single message that comes in. So just because I don't respond to it doesn't mean that I don't care. It doesn't mean that I don't love you for being here, for watching, for listening. Like, I... I, I love you guys. You guys are my best friends. Um, but sometimes I don't respond. So, I'm sorry. Like, I that's not the best, you know. Like, I wish that I could respond to every single comment and like every single DM too. Because then I have Instagram and my dms are always full and i have like people that i've talked to before i have messages from new people like it separates them and like the new people i always have like over a hundred that are there and like it gets very overwhelming and i'll tell you i'm that person the typical person that like i'll get a text message from someone and i won't reply right away because i'm like it's like that anxiety of like i don't know exactly what to say or like maybe i'm gonna respond the wrong thing and so i just end up like not responding at all and then three weeks later i'm like crap like i still haven't responded to them and it probably would have been the easiest thing to reply to but i don't know that's like is that is that anxiety is that like another issue that i don't know about like I'm sure I'm not the only one that has a hard time responding to text messages. So I've got text messages, I've got emails, I've got DMs, I've got, you know, comments. It's a lot. Um, so I do the best that I can. I really do try, but I don't get to all of them. So I apologize. I suck in that sense. So this next assumption is that I have strong political opinions, but I don't say much about it on my channel. So I do have strong political opinions. Um, I don't say much about it on my channel. I used to not at all say much about politics on my channel. Um, I will tell you, I've been much more vocal on Instagram about things that are happening in the world. Some of that sometimes translates over to YouTube, but like I've said on Instagram before, it's gotten to the point where it's it just means so much at this point, like with everything that's going on, it means so much to me to be able to share how I'm thinking about something. And I think it's important for people to be able to have conversations. Um, I don't know that like the right answers to everything like I don't necessarily think that I'm right about 100% everything that comes out of my mouth but I think that we as friends should be able to have conversations about things that are really important and I feel like politics used to not be such like a big deal to me like I used to just like vote and whatever and then watch the map the night of the voting and oh look this one's red and this one's blue and okay whatever somebody won like that used to be the extent of politics for me but now as a mom it's like because i'm so kind of afraid of like the world that my kids are gonna grow up in it's gotten to be more of a thing for me and it's become something that i can't stay quiet about so yes sometimes you're gonna see me share my beliefs about something share how i feel and um 
yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with, with politics. So this assumption is that things have been a little off since Meemaw passed away. And I will say that yes, um, I think that's true um, to be expected, right? Like that was a huge loss for us. And it's still something that we're dealing with, that we're coping with. Some days are better than others. Um, but yeah, things are a little off. Things are a little bit like when that happened, when she passed away, it kind of makes you reevaluate things, reevaluate how you spend your time. And that's something that we've had to all think about like here in the family and spending time with the kids. And then we had like the trip to like do her funeral and all of that. There was a lot of spending time with family. We did Panama City Beach, we did Alabama, and then we came back home. So yeah, things I think are a little bit off. Um, Joe's doing okay though. For those of you guys who've been asking about him, I think he's coped much better than I would have. Like if that was my mom, like I would like, I'd still be on the floor. Like I, I don't know how I would deal with that. But yeah, I would say that things have probably been a little bit off. So if you sense that, I mean, we had a huge death in the family. So we've done our best to like still live our life and still share what we can here on YouTube and all of that. But um is something that we're still working on. So this question I'm gonna answer because I've gotten enough questions about like on Instagram and here and stuff. So this assumption is that I'm an anti-vaxxer. And the answer to that is that no, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. So I already shared this information on Instagram, but Joe and I got the, the thing, right? We got it for this thing that's happening. Um, it's something that we got recently. Like I think at the end of August is when we got our second one it was something that we thought about a lot it was something that we prayed about a lot and ultimately we decided that that's what we wanted to do but at the same time i am someone who's very anti like mandating that people get it so that's where i stand on that um my kids have all their other vaccines but i do think that with this that's happening like i think that everybody has a right to do their own research and to make the decision that's best for them and their family and the minute that the government starts coming in and starts saying like oh well you have to get it or you can't go to work or you're gonna be fired and like that's craziness craziness to like level a million i've told you guys before like my parents are cuban my grandparents are cuban so therefore i have cuban heritage in me i grew up hearing about Cuba and the freedoms that they didn't have and ultimately that's why my grandparents came here to America So that's something that I take very seriously um, I take freedom very seriously because it's something that like literally my grandparents risked their lives to have and when we're living in a world where you know freedoms want to be taken away from us yeah it causes me to think and it causes me to be afraid and to be scared and to not like that so i'm not anti-vax um like i said we decided <laughs> to get it um but i can see why some people might want to make a different decision so there's your assumption so this assumption is that i'm doing a lot better with my mental health you just seem happier lately so despite this tragic loss that we had um i would say that with my mental health overall i think i am doing pretty good i'm pretty happy still um i'm still on my medication and i'm gonna do like an updated like mental health video where i kind of talk about the lexapro and how i've been doing and counseling and all of that but i think overall i've been on lexapro now for like four months and i feel like it has helped and overall like mixed with the counseling that i did and mixed with like just spending more time in the bible you know focusing on my faith i think that's helped tremendously so i feel like i'm in a good spot and i do feel happy like i feel very blessed i feel very happy um and things are you know doing pretty good so this assumption is that i secretly love gangster rap i will tell you that it's totally false i do not like gangster rap i really don't like most music like i like alternative music like alt j i like um i can't really think of too many other bands right now because i honestly don't listen to music that much anymore like there was a time where i used to listen to a lot of music um the last like full album that i remember falling in love with was like two door cinema club like random bands like that um i like but no i don't listen to a lot of music and definitely don't like gangster rap at all like not even a little bit so this person says that they assume that i'll have to vlog less once i start homeschooling riley um first of all if i start homeschooling riley it's gonna be next year so i still have some time and she would be technically in pre-k so it's not even like kindergarten yet 
but would i have to vlog less maybe a little bit less but i don't see myself vlogging like i don't see myself you know suddenly just making no videos or making just one video a week and i would hope that if i do homeschool riley that that would be even more content that i could film like i could definitely make more content about homeschooling i would definitely incorporate that into our vlogs so would i have to take a step back maybe until i get the hang of it but um i don't see myself like going away i definitely hope not that wouldn't be the intention of that so i'll answer this one this person said that they assume that i make a lot of money from youtube like an insane amount i wouldn't say that i make an insane amount of money but i definitely make i make good money i mean i'm on here i'm working a ton um i'll tell you last year i didn't quite reach six figures with my business but this year if all goes well i should finally like cross that bridge where i made six figures so it's something that i'm very proud of because i mean i've worked a ton and i feel like you know it's nice when you're compensated for it but like an insane amount like i make five hundred thousand dollars or i make a million dollars like i definitely don't but i feel like i'm very fortunate that i'm able to do what i do from home and still make a very decent good income so i'm very happy about that this person says that they assume that me and joe are very equal but that i'm also the boss and i would say that that's true like i mean he would say that he's the boss i would say that i'm the boss um we're we're each the boss in our own way but i mean i'm still kind of a little bit more of the boss so this assumption is that i know how to dance salsa they assume that i know how to dance salsa and yes i do um that is a true assumption i used to love to dance like that used to be one of my favorite things to do and that is something that sadly i had to give up because i freaking married a gringo like who doesn't know how to dance at all um obviously i love joe i love my husband but he's from freaking birmingham alabama like he does not know how to dance salsa so that was one of the things that um I was very sad about because i used i i would love to just like spend hours dancing salsa merengue like that's my jam like i grew up going to all the parties with the latin music and not that i love latin music but i love to dance to it so um yeah i definitely know how to dance also would i still be able to do it i don't know it's been years but i i love dancing this assumption is that i have a hidden potty mouth um absolutely i have a potty mouth and the only people that it's hidden to really is like you guys because if you know me in real life i curse like a sailor i curse all the time it's just i've always been like that it's how i express myself um and it's not the best thing i've had to scale back because now that riley's picking up everything i don't want her like dropping an f-bomb because like that would not be very cool but yeah i curse a lot and joe also does and the only reason i don't obviously hear is because like i know that a lot of people that watch youtube and instagram and stuff you guys watch it with your kids and i don't want your kids hearing that but yeah i have a potty mouth so you're not alone if you're also a potty mouth so this person assumes that i only take on brand deals sponsorships for products that i actually use and like so i i'm glad that that's the assumption because i would like to think that that is true um there are a lot of times that i get emails from people and i've i turn them down like I've t i don't have to tell you this like I've, t I've done a million videos saying that but i turn down a lot of opportunities for quick and easy money because i'm like most of the time the reason why i turn them down is because it's something that's like like for example like a purse that's 300 500 dollars like realistically i know that that's expensive and that people aren't really going to necessarily gravitate towards that like i know you guys like we're looking for deals we're going to target we're looking for you know bogos and stuff so when i see something that's like a really high price point or something like that i'm like it's gonna be kind of hard to sell that unless like i absolutely love it like magic spoon cereal freaking love it it's ten dollars a box but um i love it so i keep working with them and at this point it's like part of our family like my sister buys it my brother buys it like we all buy it we love it but yes it's pricier and even in cases like that i've gone to the brand and been like can you please explain to me why your product is so expensive so that i have a better idea of like how we can justify it because like that's expensive so um yes point is yes i work with brands that either i have used myself or that i use and then i end up liking or that i feel like enough of you guys would like it or would 
benefit by learning about it so that I'm not just showing you a bunch of random crap all the time. The next assumption is also very random, but is that I'm very bad at video games. So at this point, I think I would be bad at video games because I mean, I've been years without playing video games, but there was a time in high school where I used to play Ghost Recon, Far Cry, like I used to play all of the shooting games like non-stop like I had a boyfriend like my high school boyfriend that he would come over to my house and that's literally all we would do is like play video games and um, I think I was pretty decent at them now I don't think I could anymore because I don't have the patience for that but um, yeah I, I was pretty good at video games for a while but this assumption is that I unapologetically spoil my children yes I do I, unapolo I unapologetically spoil my kids they're my kids if I want to spend a million dollars on them, I mean, I don't have a million dollars, but if I wanted to, that would be for me to do. And um, I'm very okay with the decisions that I make for my kids. I love it. They are my the most important things in my universe, in my life. So if I want to spoil them, then I'm going to do that. And I don't care what anybody else says. And then the last one I'll read today because I know that this video is already pretty long. This person assumes that I am very confident about your life decisions slash the way that you live your life. So in that sense, um, the answer to this question is yes. I think that that is a correct assumption. And I hope that, you know, that that translates, that you guys see that. Um, I think that these days, everybody, everybody, and their mother wants to tell you how to be a mother. Like everybody wants to tell you what you're supposed to be doing, how you're supposed to be raising your kids, you know, what they find fault in your parenting and all of that. And it's hard, it's hard, especially like when you're putting yourself out there, when you're putting your life out there for everyone to see. There is a ton of judgment to be had, but even the people that don't put their Instagram out there or don't have an Instagram or YouTube, like you guys are moms or, or just women in general. And there's people that are telling you like how to live your life. And now that I'm in my thirties, I feel like I have never been more confident ever. Like I've always been a pretty confident person, I would say, but I've never been more confident than I am now. Um, I feel like I am a very smart and capable person and that I make decisions that are the best for me and for my family and everybody else can go suck it. Like that is kind of how I feel. And I feel like that's kind of the attitude you have to have because otherwise you're gonna spend your entire life just second guessing yourself, second guessing your decisions, having other people, um, you know, steer how you parent and other people's opinions being the ones that matter more than your own. So I've learned over time that like, my goal is to make sure that God is happy with me. You know, like if God is happy with me, if I'm doing what I believe is right for my family, God being at the forefront of that, like that's what's important to me. Not to make a million other people happy, not to make like other family members happy, not to make the internet happy, not to make drama channels happy, not to make, you know, my cousin happy, like, you know, extended family members, even just like doing YouTube, like YouTube is a, different career choice right like not everybody does this and there have been plenty of moments where people have been like that's what you're gonna do or like that's what you you currently do and i've had to be very confident about that like even back in the day when i wasn't making money from it like even back in the day when i just started my blog and i was making nothing from it um i've had to just kind of hold firm in the decisions that i've made for myself that doesn't mean that like i'm always gonna have the right answer it doesn't mean that i'm never gonna fail because god knows like i have fallen on my face a million times point is that i i think that assumption is true i am very confident in how i live my life um i'm always open to constructive feedback constructive um comments like you guys help me a bunch like when you give me advice or when you tell me like hey if you're wondering here's a solution to your problem like i'm not saying that i can't take that but i'm very happy with how i'm living my life and i think that's one of the things that makes me like a happier person because like i'm content with how things are going so i'm not constantly worrying about like oh what are a million other people thinking but uh yeah that's probably gonna be it for today's video um, I hope that you guys enjoyed chatting. It's been a minute since I do like one of these Q and A's um, or like one of these kinds of videos. So it was nice to kind of like catch up and chit chat. There's been um, a lot of new people on my Instagram account. So if you're here from my Instagram account, um, welcome, hello, be my friend. Um, I hope that this again, got you to learn a little bit more about me, but 
I had, if you guys haven't seen it, I had a freaking reel go viral on Instagram of Riley, like where she was saying that she wanted to be the queen. I don't know if you guys have seen that one or not, but um, it has like almost 6 million views at this point, which is like out of all the content I've ever made, in my 10 years of being on the internet, that's like the one video that has gotten the most views. So I thought it would be good like in case there's like new faces here um, to kind of chit chat with you guys. And it just feels nice to finally be back home, not be sick anymore, not be traveling anymore. And I hope that this week that we can film some more vlogs and keep hanging out. So let me know what you guys want to see on my channel. Let me know if there's anything that you want me to focus on or if you have any other questions. Um, I miss you guys and I freaking love your faces and I'm so glad that you guys are here. So I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. If you did, subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.